What's going on, my ASVAB party people? Anderson here, your ASVAB coach, and we got a nice little treat for you today, a two-hour class recording for solving equations. So in this class, we go over a bunch of different types of equations that you'll be able to solve, as well as techniques and really the main idea behind looking at any equation and knowing exactly what to do. And who doesn't want that? Look, at the end of the day, what's most important is that we know how to handle situations that would otherwise be tough. The score you get really depends on how calm you can stay when it comes to those test anxiety situations. So, solving equations right over here. We got two hours of it coming right up. Enjoy it. But what I do ask is that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and please, please, please comment whenever you see something that you're like, wow, this is awesome, or wow, I tried this out, I learned it, got it right. Comment on this video all the way through, please and thank you. I got your back, all right? And so on top of that, if you haven't signed up for my free materials yet, get on up that and get in there. And also, if you haven't heard about my full program, you gotta make sure you check it out at the very least. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, when you wanna succeed, you have the motivation and energy, but you're not quite sure where to start, that can spell disaster if you take too long to get things going. And that's what a program will do for you. This program is gonna make sure that you know how to start, how to keep things going, and how to use your time wisely, as opposed to studying for two straight days and then forgetting all of it a couple days later. You know, you wanna be able to study and know that the next day it still makes sense. The two days, three days, a week later, it still makes sense. And that's what the program will do for you. So without further ado, I wanna go ahead and just share this with you right here again. You get all of my classes, recordings, you get all of the practice problems and study guides and drill sets that you'll need, video solutions, and you get to text me whenever you need help. So go to duranlearning.com now or check out the link in the description of this video to go ahead, watch a video on how it works for the full program, and then sign up if you like what you see. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the math action, my party people. I'm Anderson, your ASVAB coach. Let's raise that score and get the job we want. I'll see you on the other side. All right, let's go ahead, let's get started. Here we go, here we go. So solving equations. Now, here's the main, main, main idea to solving equations. I know right here, this is talking about the four steps. Don't worry about that right now, guys. Really what we need to understand and really need to, I guess, uh, implement today is this idea. Everybody help me out. Solving equations is the art of... Oh, look at that, Simone. Already had it there. Look at that. Solving equations is the art of working backwards. Look at you, Simone. Appreciate you. It's not like you've you know, seen me teach this kind of class seven or eight times already. Right on. So solving equations, everybody write this down. Solving equations is the art of working backwards. Is the art of working. I'm going to write this in red here. Working backwards. All right, it is the art of working backwards. We are doing and taking the opposite steps and the opposite operations to solve. And so once you understand the mechanics behind this, and once we really clarify some of the things that we already know, like do the same thing to both sides and things like that. Once we clarify those ideas, I'm pretty sure a lot of us are gonna look at this in a sense of not something that you memorize, but something that you can work with. So. Uh, well, <laughs> let me go ahead and allow y'all to write these four steps down. Uh, feel free to write these down. I'll bring these back in a little bit. But really, when it comes to solving equations, generally, these are the four steps you want to take. The general step, again, work backwards. Just do the opposite. Do the same thing to both sides, and you're good. But if you want to see it in a more formal way, this would be it right here. Step one, well, you want to simplify both sides of the equation. If there's a two plus a three on the left side, just combine them to make a five. That's all I mean. That's all I mean. So, so simplify both sides means, hey, if you have, let's say, you know, two X plus three plus one equals seven, well, you can turn that into two X plus four equals seven. That's all I'm saying. You know, if you have two things on the same side and you can simplify them, simplify. That's all step one means. Step two. Step two, really what that means is, you're going to take everything on the equation that's a variable, move it to one side. Everything that's just a regular old number, move it to the other. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to get the variable by itself. And you start 
by getting those regular numbers out of the way. Now, notice how I didn't say add or subtract to move. Your first step could be division. Your first step could be multiplication. Everybody, yes or no? Have you ever had a situation where you're solving an equation? You're solving an equation. You see a plus or a minus. And you also see multiplication division, but your first step was multiplication division. Like your first step was to work backwards from there. Have you ever done a problem where your first step was working backwards from first the multiplication to division, not the addition subtraction? And I know a few of us have, and that's great, but I'm going to show you plenty more examples where you have to be really cognizant of what's going on. You got to be aware of what's going on. And again, I'm going to walk you through all of this. So step three, or let me actually give you an example of step two. Let me use green here. So for example, if we're here, what you would do is you would basically move that four over and don't worry about me showing you the steps, don't worry, but you're gonna move all of that to one side and all the regular old numbers to the other. That's all I mean, don't worry about the subtracting four on both sides, don't worry. If that makes sense, I got your back. But really what you wanna do is get to the point where you're like this, where you're like, okay, the two X equals three right there. And now you can take one final step to get that variable by itself. And that's gonna be right here. Isolate the variable using multiplication, division, root, whatever the heck it is, you are going to get rid of whatever is on your variable. So a quick, quick, quick little question for everybody here. Everybody, what operation is happening between the two and the X? What operation is happening there between the two and the X? The operation that's currently happening is multiplication. And everybody remember, the art of solving equations is working backwards. Solving equations is the art of working backwards. And so what we would need to do at the end is, again, just do the opposite. Get rid of whatever's around the variable. So here it's 2x, 2 times x. You would get rid of that by dividing both sides by 2. And never mind that it's going to be a decimal. Never mind that it's going to be a, an ugly looking fraction or number. Don't worry about that. Just worry about the process. Worry about how to be correct and stop worrying about how pretty the numbers look. I, I got to make sure I say that loud and clear. So here we have X equals 1.5. Okay, whatever. It's a decimal. Hoo-ha. Okay, no worries. I got you. And we're good. And as always, we do want to check our work. Can anybody here tell me how the heck do we check our work when it comes to solving equations? You can raise your hand. You can type into the chat box. How do we check our work? Plug it in. That's right. We would plug that number right back in. Um, so David, Jose, go ahead and put your hands down, guys. They already said it. I know. But we're going to go ahead and plug the number back in. And so what that would look like is this. What that would look like is you would take that 1.5 right here and you would plug it right back into the original equation. Nice and easy and see if the left side equals the right side. And we will go over this plenty, plenty, plenty. Okay, plenty, plenty, plenty. So let's go over some additional notes real quick and then we're gonna get straight to the practice. Straight to the practice. Solving equations is one of those things that you just need the repetition. So I got you. So here we go. Come on like terms. Basically, like terms, two things, and I want everybody to write this down. Please write this down and repeat it in the chat box. Combining like terms. Like terms have the same variables and the same exponents. Everybody, please write that down. I know, I know, David. So please go ahead and write that down here again. Like, I'm going to type this first. Have the same variables and same exponents. Just go and type that out. Like terms have the same variables and the same exponents. All I'm trying to set you up for is making sure that you're not combining variables with regular numbers. They're not going to combine. You want to make sure you're only combining and simplifying when you can, not when you believe it should be going on. That's right. Like terms have the same variables and same exponents. Exactly. Write that down. And again, we're going to go ahead and go over all of this. So don't worry. We've got plenty, plenty, plenty of examples here. And so let's go ahead and keep that party going. So up next here, remember this. These are the key rules of equations. Key rules right over here. Key rules. Number one, 
whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. That goes hundredfold, hundredfold. If I, if I had to, you know, besides the art of working backwards, little phrase that I said earlier, this is really it. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. All you're trying to do is get rid of everything around the variable. You want to get the variable by itself. So all you have to do is follow this one principle. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, and that is it. That is it. So with that, solving equations, one more time, everybody, type it out to the chat box. Solving equations is the art of, ah, tough question, tough question. Yeah, working backwards. That's right, working backwards. Working backwards. All right. So last thing here, you don't really need to write this down. This is more so just me kind of reminding you that, you know, no problem is safe. <laughs> like, will you need to understand fractions or decimals with solving equations? I'll let y'all tell me. Have any, has anybody here ever done a problem solving equations? There were fractions involved. There were decimals involved. Has anybody here ever had that situation? Yeah. You don't have to worry about dealing with funky numbers until you don't know how to deal with them. If you struggle handling decimals, if you struggle handling fractions, that's on you. Because what we need to understand is that there's a process no matter what. Fractions and decimals, they're just numbers. They're going to be treated the same way, but we have to make sure that we are, again, understanding the process and that we're not just hoping and wishing that everything's going to be easy for us. And so allow me to guide you through a warm up here. We're going to go ahead and go right to here. And we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of fun here. Okay. We're going to have a little bit of fun. So let's start off by looking at really these first four problems up top. Let me just zoom on in just a little more. You know, let's just look. I know we have all these problems we can look at. We could do all of them, but I really just want to focus on these first four. Everybody, let's just talk real quick. We're just trying to work backwards. We're just trying to get the variable by itself. So just take a look here. X minus 19 equals negative 11. Oscar, don't worry. I'm going to go back in a moment. I'm going to let you screenshot. But let's take a look at number one here. Everybody, what is around the X that we're trying to get by itself? What is happening to the X right now? What is happening right now? What do we see right now? What do we mean it's a one? All right, there's a one in front of the X. What else can we say is happening to the X on the same side of the equation? What do we see is going on? X, what's going on around the X? What's going on around the X? It's being subtracted by the 19. So remember everybody, we always wanna consider opposite, not signs, but opposite operations. So if we're sitting here, everybody think of it like this. I want to get rid of that 19. How can I get rid of that 19? So if right now we have X minus 19, how can I get rid of that 19? Right, we would add it to both sides. So if anybody here is wondering, hey, is that legal? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So here, what we would do is we would do the opposite of subtracting 19 and we would add 19. Now, for anybody here who does not like negative numbers and you're thinking, hey, uh, negative 11 plus 19, you lost me, buddy. No, I didn't. So remember, when you have opposite signs like that being added, all you gotta do is subtract the numbers and then keep the sign of the bigger number. You can also look at this. Everybody, another way to look at this would just be 19 minus 11. This right here is the same thing as saying 19 minus 11. And what's 19 minus 11, my party people? Right, it's gonna be eight. And so the answer for this first one would be X equals eight. And for those of us that are still asking, saying, hey, uh, why are we adding 19 again? Remember, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And so if I wanna get rid of subtracting 19, think of it like this, everybody. If I said, hey, I'm starting here, whatever X is, I'm starting here. And what I'm currently doing is I'm gonna go from where I started 
and I'm going to take away 19. I'm going to go 19 steps backwards. Well, how would we get back to just where we started? You do the opposite, right? Instead of going 19 steps backwards, you'll go 19 steps forward. And once you do that, boom, it's going to basically negate or cancel out that step going backwards 19. You took it away, you canceled it, and now we graciously have X by itself. Again, the purpose of performing opposite operations is to get rid of everything that's around the X or to move things from one side to the other whenever you want to as well. So yes or no, does it make sense why we take the opposite operation? Again, it's to get rid of what's around the X. LSA, that's right. Cool, 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 cool. So let's take a look at number three here and then we're gonna go pop on over over here. So let's take a look at number three. Again, you always wanna ask yourself, what math is currently happening and what should I do? That's really it. What math is currently happening and what can I do to both sides? So what is currently happening on the left side where that N is? What's currently happening, everybody? Right, we're currently multiplying. So with that said, opposite of multiplication, nice and easy. And don't worry, if you're looking for harder problems, just stay tuned. So yeah, that's gonna be division. Yeah, the opposite of multiplying by 12 is gonna be dividing by 12. And again, that's the idea, everybody. We just wanna perform the opposite operation to get rid of everything around the variable. So watch right here. Divide by 12, divide by 12, bam. That's gone right there. Then you ask yourself, how many times does 12 go into 168? Well, how many times is that my part of people? Who knows? The answer will be 14. That is correct. Because one thing you can do is that you know that 168, if you think about 12, well, 12 to 120, that's times 10. So if you're at 120 already, if you're at 120 already, you only have 48 more to go. 12 goes into 48 four times, 10 and four is 14. If you didn't see that, don't worry. Don't worry one bit because what you can do is you can just perform your long division. You can just say 12 goes into 168, 12 goes into 16 one time. There's your four, bring that eight down. 12 goes into 48 four times and you have N equals 14, all right? N would equal 14 in that sense. So I'm gonna zoom out for a quick moment. I'm gonna allow you to take a picture there, Krista, I gotcha. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow you guys to try these on your own now. I'm gonna go ahead and present to you a few more problems. I'm gonna to present to you at least four more, and then I'm gonna let you give it a try. So here we go. I should be able to fit a little more in there actually. Yeah, if I get my big old head out the way, we can absolutely get more of these problems in. So goodbye to my face. Let me actually get the timer in here. And I'm gonna give y'all about, about two minutes here. It's gonna say two minutes, 30 seconds, but that's fine. I'm gonna give you about two minutes to try as many of these as you would like to. So let me just zoom out just a little bit. You should be able to see all of these problems. And if you can't see any of them, don't worry. I'm gonna give that to you right there. And Oscar, don't worry, I did not forget about you. Right after this, we will go right back. So Cali, pick whichever ones you want. I'm gonna give you all of the answers right after the fact, and I'm gonna ask if anybody has any questions on them, which I do expect some. So go ahead, give it a shot, and we will be reviewing this in just under two minutes. Give it your shot. And remember, if you see a fraction, everybody help me out. A fraction is what operation? Appreciate you, Mackenzie, Dorian, that's right. Yeah, thank you, Simone. A fraction is division. And so the opposite of division would be multiplication. That's how you would get rid of it. So give it a shot. We'll be back soon. Start with number two. So we have 11P equals 187. Did anybody here get distracted by the fact that you're dealing with a three-digit number, 187? Anybody look at that like... Man, I gotta do that. All 
It's okay. Be honest. Yeah, I know. I know a couple of y'all might have looked at that and just said, "Hey, I've completely forgot what the step was because I'm looking at a big number." That's okay. We got to make sure we know what to do because you're not going to deal with the big number until you know what to do with it anyway. So stop worrying about the size of the numbers or the fractions or the decimals and just concern yourself with what the process should be looking like and then perform that process. So here, here we go. 11B equals 187. Everybody, what's currently happening to the P? What operation is currently happening? Right. 11 and P are being multiplied together. If they're being multiplied together, do the opposite. And the opposite is going to be dividing by 11. And remember, you have to make sure you do it to both sides. So everybody, please do me a favor. Type into the chat box right here. Divide 11 on both sides. Type that in, please. Right on, right on, right on. Divide 11 on both sides. Appreciate that, my partner. Appreciate that. So here we go. We get that done. And we end up getting P by itself. And then you must be asking, okay, well, what's 187 divided by 11? Well, that's going to end up being, I believe, 77. The reason I know that is because 11 goes into 110, 10 times. And then you have 77 left. So 10 and 7 makes 17. And so, boom, that would be my answer there. It would be 17. But again, if you didn't know that, always resort to your long division here. 11 goes into 18 one time. You get 7, 7, 11 into 77, 7 times. So again, long division or mental math can still get you the right answer. P equals 17 would be it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the one that everybody's freaking out about. M over nine equals four. Did anybody here avoid this one? Because they didn't want to catch those math hands. Did anybody here avoid this one? Oscar, you avoided it, no worries. I see some, nah, yeah, I did. I see some of those in there. It's all good. You don't have to lie to me, but I can still tell. So with that, let's go ahead and check some of these out. It's all good. So. Again, what you want to ask yourself is this, everybody, to stay calm and solve the equations. Stay nice and calm. Talk yourself through it. Everybody, I see a fraction here, m over 9. Fraction m over 9 is the same thing as saying what operation? What operation? Yeah, division. It's going to be division. That's what we're currently looking at. So remember, everybody, all you have to ask yourself is, what's the opposite operation? What's the opposite of dividing by nine, everybody? Right. Right. Multiplication by nine. Multiplication by nine. So that's exactly what we'll do. So the opposite of dividing by nine is multiplying by nine. So I'm going to multiply by nine on both sides right there. Everybody, what happens on the left side again? Cancels out. Right there, it cancels out. And we're left with four times nine. Everybody, four times nine is going to give us what? Correct. Correcto mundo, right there. That is huge for that highlighter, but no worries, we're good. So, what I'll do is I'll go ahead here, finish off the rest of these problems, and I'll give you the answers. So, for number five, the answer would have been again the same thing. You see that you're doing V divided by five. So the opposite would be multiplying both sides by five. Here you should get V equals 20. That's what you should have gotten there. Number six, what we should have gotten for number six would be adding 10 to both sides. And that would have been N equals 11. Up next over here for number seven, we see that we have negative 128 equals negative eight. Okay, now looking at that, you're saying, hey, I have a minus eight with the K, but everybody answer me this, what operation is truly happening? What operation is truly happening between the negative eight and the K? Right, it's gonna be multiplication. It is not subtraction. It is not subtraction. I know a lot of the times we're used to seeing a negative number and we think that we're subtracting, but remember, 
you're asking, what am I doing around the variable? So right here, what am I doing around the variable? Well, there's my K. What am I doing around it? I'm multiplying it by negative eight. I'm not subtracting eight. I'm multiplying by negative eight. So the opposite of multiplying by negative eight, everybody, is to divide by negative eight. We have to get rid of the negative and we have to get rid of the eight. So you would divide both sides by the negative eight. And there we have it. Everybody, what's a negative divided by a negative? What do we get again? That's right, yeah, we get a positive, exactly. We get a positive. So what would end up happening here is, hey, these turn into pluses. And now we just have to think about 128 divided by eight. That's gonna be 16. Mental math tells me 80, 40, and eight. 80 divided by eight is 10. 48 divided by eight is six. There you go. One, that's gonna be 10 and six to give you 16. But you could also always, again, just take that long division, nice and easy. Eight goes into 12 one time. Drop that eight down. And then you would say, hey, 48 divided by eight, that's gonna be six, nice and easy. And there you go. And there you go, nice and easy. K here equals 16. Next up. So Krishan, what you want to do here is again, opposite operations, okay? Opposite operations. So what I'm looking at here, right over here, you see that we have negative eight multiplied by the K. So Krishan and everybody else just want to make sure we see it this way, because I got y'all. If we're taking a look at, let's say five X, everybody, are we multiplying the five and the X together currently? When we're taking a look at five X, that's five times X, right? Right, that's five times X. Okay, then what's the difference between five X and negative five X? There's no difference. In one case, you're multiplying by five on the X. In the other case, you're multiplying by a negative five on the X. So either way, you're still gonna divide out whatever number you see, okay? Whatever number you see in front of a variable, eventually you're gonna divide that number away. Eventually you will divide that number away. So Krishan, does that make a little more sense there, boss? Let me know. Gotcha, Marquette, we'll take a look at it for sure. So Krishan, let me know if that makes a little more sense to you, boss. But yeah, it's the same idea. If you have 5x or a negative 5x, it doesn't matter. You're still multiplying whatever x is with that number. So even though there's a negative there, you're still dividing by that thing there. There's a difference between that and this. x minus 5 equals 2 or something like that. That's different because here you are subtracting. You're subtracting here. Here you are multiplying these two things together. Here, the operation is subtraction. Here, the operation is multiplication. So this is something that I love taking my time on because not everybody takes the time to appreciate that, which means, hey, down the road, could be facing some failures. Exactly, Krishan, exactly. 5X, you're multiplying, and if it's negative 5X, still multiplying, still multiplying, still multiplying. So let's take a look at number eight here. Number eight. We have M divided by four equals negative 15. Everybody, what operation is currently happening to the M? Right, so right now that M is getting divided. So what I'm gonna do is do the opposite of dividing and I'm gonna multiply. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by four, just like that. And what happens on the left? It ends up canceling out. And we end up having M equals negative 15 times four. And that would end up being, well, a negative times a positive is what? A negative times a positive is a negative. And then 15 times four is what? Right, you could just double 15 twice. So 15, double it to get 30, double it again to get 60. So the answer is negative 60. Right there, negative 60. Let's take a look at number nine and number 10. 
and we'll be on our way. So this is something unique, right? This is definitely a little unique. Did anybody here avoid this one? Or was this even on the screen? I think this was on the screen. Anybody here avoid this one? I ain't not scared, <laughs> right? It's all good. If you didn't get to it, didn't get to it, it's all good. But everybody just ask yourself real quick, just ask yourself, Krishan, I got you, we're going in order. If we're taking a look here, everybody just answer me this. What's the goal again? What's the goal again here? Thank you. To get A by itself. Again, guys, stop worrying about what you see and remember what your goal is. There we go. Sorry about that. But yeah, just make sure you know what the objective is. The goal is to get A by itself. So just focus on the variable, everybody. Just focus on that right here. We've got A right there. And everybody, what is happening to the A? It's being divided by 14. So what's the opposite of dividing by 14, everybody? Exactly. Multiply by 14, and we are good. So that's exactly what I'll do here. I'll multiply by 14 on this side and multiply by 14 on that side. Multiply by 14. Everybody, if you have a fraction, so let me write this over here. If we have a fraction like this, 14 times one over seven, everybody, where does that 14 go with the top or the bottom if you're just multiplying the whole fraction by 14? The top, it can be the top. If you're multiplying both sides by a number and you just so happen to have a fraction, remember that that number is gonna be multiplied with the top, that's it. That's it right there. So I'm gonna go and show you what that looks like. That'll be right here. That equals A. And so this is the same thing as looking at 14 over seven equals A. Same thing right there. Yep, and you can absolutely simplify, Priscilla. Great job pointing that out. Yep, we'll absolutely simplify that because we can see that we have 14 over seven, which is the same thing as dividing. 14 divided by seven. Everybody, 14 divided by seven is, boom, what? Right on, Epiteo. Yeah, the answer is going to be two. The answer is going to be two. A equals two. Because 14 divided by two, or seven, is two. And so with that, um, Jose, yeah, that is a ratio. You could absolutely solve that by cross multiplying and dividing. Sure. So what if the top is an A? Felipe, let's give an example here. I got you. Let's give an example. Let's say that we have two over three equals A over six. Let's say we have something like that. So if we have something like this, and yes, if you're thinking that we could cross multiply and divide, you're correct. I'm not gonna argue with you there. You can absolutely do that. There more, there's more than one way to solve a problem, right? But when you're looking at this, if you know the true way, if you know the general sense of, yo, we're just trying to get A by itself. If you cross multiply and divide, you're actually taking two steps. You're cross multiplying and then dividing. But by looking at it like this, we can actually get the job done in one step. Watch this right here. Everybody, what is currently happening to the A? What's currently happening to that A right there? Right, it's being divided by six. It's A over six. It's A being divided by six. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the opposite operation. Instead of dividing by six, I'm gonna multiply by six. Just like this, just like this. Right there, I'm gonna multiply. And notice that right here on the right, that's gonna cancel out. And from here, everybody, what did I say? If you multiply a fraction by a number, where does that number get multiplied? To the top or the bottom? Right, it'll get multiplied to the top. Because remember everybody, if you're multiplying by six, 
That's the same thing as saying six over one. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And one thing that we should know at this point, and if you didn't, here's your refresher. But one thing that you should know is that when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. And so here, six times two, that's gonna give us 12. One times three, that's gonna give us three. And then what we're gonna have right over here is A by itself. And everybody, what's 12 divided by three? And that'll be four. And that'll be four in this one here. A would equal four. Now, if you're still sitting here saying, hey, why don't we cross multiply? Why don't we cross multiply? Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Absolutely, we can do that. And I'll show you one more time here that you can, just to prove it to you. So A over three, or excuse me, two over three, excuse me there equals a over six. So watch this, we can absolutely cross multiply. So we can do three times a, which is three a, two times six, which is 12. And then from there, what do we do to both sides, everybody? What do we do? What do we do? Hey, Lewis, we get the one over there because anything, any number is the same thing as writing that number over one. I could say four, or I could say four divided by one. Four divided by one is still gonna be four. It doesn't change anything. You could just understand that what I'm saying is any number can be written as a fraction over one. That's all I'm saying. So like six is the same thing as saying six over one because six divided by one is six. So it just helped us look at the fraction a little better. But if we divide both sides by three, getting back on topic here, check this out. Doesn't this look familiar? Doesn't that look familiar? Same idea, same idea right there through and through, right? Same idea. And so, bam, that's gonna cancel out right here, giving me A equals four, same exact answer. So does everybody here understand that when you're dealing with fractions with equations, yeah, you can do cross multiplication, but you can also just get the variable by itself. They both work, absolutely. Does everybody here understand that? All right, perfect. So we're gonna go through 10, 11, 12. So here, 112 equals eight X. All we'll do here is get rid of the eight. What's currently happening is eight times X. So we will get rid of it by dividing eight on both sides. Again, the goal is just to get the variable by itself. And so if I do that, bam, then we get X equals, in this case, this would be 14. So basically 112 divided by eight is gonna give you 14 in that sense. That's all good. That's all good, Armani. So there's 10. So just to remind me, we only got through numbers one through 10, right? Or did anybody here get to do 11 and 12? Did anybody here get to do 11 and 12? While I was timing it, while I was timing it. No, okay. So the majority of us did not. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. How do you guys feel about me giving you one more shot here, letting you do problems 11 through 20? Try them again on a timer. Are you guys gonna feel more confident, less confident? How are you feeling if I were to present to you the remaining 10 problems? Are we gonna feel more confident, less confident, knowing what to do, knowing what not to do? Right on. Because my party people, remember this. The idea is not to sit here and be perfect. You know, there's so many times that people don't try because they know they're going to get it wrong or make a mistake. And it's part of the process that happens. But I want you to understand and realize and really accept that you just need to do your best and then you can make it better. So let's go ahead and go through these next 10. I'm going to give you two minutes and 30 seconds. And I'm going to provide those answers right there on the spot once we're done. David, once the timer starts. Oh, wait, and make sure I keep my promise. Oscar, go ahead. This is that last slide you needed. So go ahead, Oscar. I got you. I'm going to count to seven seconds here. Boom, perfect. And so with that, I do believe, Krishan, you wanted number one as well, which I did give you the opportunity to look at already. So that should be good. What is this boy David going to say? Probably going to start with mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. All right, so here's where I'm coming from, Coach. What I'm going to try to point out is, and then blank, blank, blank. 
That's what I'm assuming. But let's go ahead and get this timer started. Oh, we're only going to be doing up to number 20. So we only need to worry about up to number 20. So there it is, my party people. Let me go ahead and turn the timer and then get David on the mic. All right, timer started. Go ahead, David. What's up, man? Well, you already didn't. Hold on. Well, you already didn't set it for me, so you know what I'm saying? But my check, my check, one, two, one, two. How y'all doing, folks? How y'all doing? Two and two, two and two crew. Now, quick thing, quick question. I wasn't going to take too much, but whether the A on one of them fraction problems is at the top or the bottom, meaning the numerator or the denominator part or the position, the process is still going to be the same regardless, I'm assuming. Well, let's not assume there. Let's not assume oh, oh, because okay. when you have a situation like – so David, I believe you're talking to the effect of, hey, we have, let's say, let's go and say we have like four over three equals, and then we'll go ahead and say 20 over A, something like that, right? Or 20 exactly. over A, 20 over X, something exactly. like that, right? So in this situation, well, you have to ask yourself, what's happening with the X? The 20 is being divided by the X, right? It's not X being divided by 20. Is the 20 being divided by X. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, David, what we would see is we would need that variable not at the bottom, not at the denominator. We need it at the top, right? Oh, of course. And so what I would do first, there's two ways to really think about it. The formal way, or there's three ways, really. The, the formal way would just be, hey, let me go ahead and multiply by X on both sides to get rid of it here. And then let me get rid of that three by multiplying by three on both sides. So if you do that, what you end up getting in this case is going to be what? Well, the three is get, gotten rid of there. And so you end up with four X equals 20 times three and that's 60. And now the X is up top, not the bottom. Oh, wow. Okay. Remember, that's okay. Getting the variable by itself. In that case, the X was being trapped because it was in the denominator. So what you need to do is put it in the numerator by multiplying it on both sides. And you also multiply three on both sides too. Yeah, um, just because I wanted to get rid of that fraction right there. That's so that would be the same um, thing as cross multiplication if you want to think about it that way. Because if I present it to you again like this, you can just cross multiply. And what you would end up getting was four X equals 60. Cross multiplication. Right there. Yeah, and that would be the case right there. And then the third way, if you want to look at this in a different way, I would honestly just say um, break the math. Uh, but not really. What you would do is <laughs> just do the same thing to both sides. So if I have 4 over 3 equals 20 over X, well, really all you have to tell yourself is this. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. If I want to flip one of the fractions, I'll flip the other one. So you can turn this into completely something different, but you can say instead of four over three, three over four. Instead of 20 over X, X over 20. Now you're in a position to just multiply both sides by 20 and you're done. Oh, I thought you, oh, okay, never mind. I thought you did keep change flip for a minute. I was like, wait a minute, hold on, bring it back home. Uh, <laughs> it's not because what I did here was flip, flip. That's all I did. Oh, flip, flip. Flip, flip. That's all I did. Is the flip flip rule now? No, it's just doing the same thing to both sides. All right. Oh, actually, just doing the same okay. Thing to both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just doing the same thing to both sides. So there's three really main ways. One is cross multiplication. The other one is going to be just isolating the x by multiplying it on both sides and then doing the math. And right up here, if you got two fractions, just again, you're just comparing the same things in the same way. You can say four over three, twenty over x, or you can say three over four. X over 20. That's a proportion. Oh, but that first fraction right there would be now an improper fraction, but that wouldn't matter because the answer would still be the same. Exactly. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So with that, that is time right there. That is time, my party people. So honest question, how many of the 10 questions here from 11 through 20, how many of these were you confidently able to get done? Zero. Well, David, yes, I know, because you don't try ever. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Why is your mic still on? So with that, 
So with that, let's check these out, man. Let's check, David, I know you're a hard worker. Everybody, David, one of my favorite students, obviously, he is here, shows up every day, um, puts in the work. All right, got them all, got them weak. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out here. Number 11, here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rapid fire on the answers. And then what I want you to do is call out the number that you would like me to review if you would like me to review it. So allow me to just take this away for a brief moment. And I write all of our answers here in red. So for this first one, negative 16. Number 12, we end up having N equals negative three. Number 13, we end up having B equals, I believe this can be negative 19. Number 14, we're gonna P equals negative three. Here for number 15, X equals 17. For number 16, you're gonna have N equals, and that's gonna be uh, 80 and then 48. So that's gonna be five and three. So that's gonna be eight. Then we're gonna have 17. That's gonna be R equals negative 18. 18, we're gonna have K equals 12. Number 19, we're gonna end up having P equals six. And number 20, we're gonna have B equals 180 plus 36, so 216. Is that correct, my party people? Who here nailed them all? All right, I see y'all. Got two wrong, that's good, that's fine. That's fine, right? Bell, the main thing is not about making mistakes, it's about being able to recover from those mistakes and take those next steps appropriately. Right, that's really the appropriate response in that sense. So, Lewis, you want to go over number 12 and 13? All right, let's go over it. So, let's start off with number 12 here. Number 12, let's take a look here. So, the answer is going to be n equals negative three. We know that. And then I'll go ahead and replace that. Okay. So, let's go ahead and go over number 12. This is something that we haven't seen yet, quite yet, right? We haven't seen this quite yet. And so Edward and Alan, keep or Edward, uh, keep your hand up there and I will call on you. Um, so here, negative 11 plus n equals negative 14. So my question is, what's happening to the n right now? What, 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 what operation is happening around the n? Right, the n is being added to the negative 11. So the negative 11 and the n, they're together by addition, but I really wanna make you think about it like this, everybody. There's two real ways to look at this, and I'm gonna show you both because at the end of the day, if you see it both ways, that's a good thing. It's a good thing if you can see it both ways. So here, here are both of my kind of like observations. Question, everybody, is one plus two the same as two plus one? Just a quick question. Is one plus two the same as two plus one? I know it sounds rhetorical, but I just wanna answer, I wanna have you answer the question because it's gonna give me a, a flow uh, of logic to present to you why I do things the way I do. So again, we all agree, nobody here disagrees, thankfully, that one plus two is the same as two plus one. Well, let's think about it this way. Is negative 11 plus N the same as N minus 11? Are those the same thing? Are those the same thing? Yeah, they are. They are. You're saying negative 11 plus n. So you can say n plus negative 11. But if you're adding negative 11, that's just the same thing as subtracting 11. It's the same thing. I'm going to add $11 of debt, or I'm going to take out $11. I'm going to debt myself $11. Yeah, so 11 plus n is the same as n minus 11. They're the same thing. And so if you wanted to get rid of that 11, everybody, what should I do to both sides in this case? What should I do? Correct, we should add. We should add. And so to get rid of that minus 11, we will add 11 to both sides. right? And then you will cancel that on the left, correct? And now we have negative 14 plus 11. So remember everybody, whenever you're adding opposite signs, so you have already a negative 14, so you're going left 14, 
and you're trying to pull back to the right by 11, you take the difference and keep the sign of the larger number. So everybody, what's the difference between 14 and 11? What's the difference? It's gonna be three, but the sign of that three is gonna be what? It's gonna be negative because again, the 14 was the bigger number and the 14 was the negative number. So you keep the negative on the three. Now Marquette, I saw that you said, hey, uh, I went ahead and added 14 to both sides. You have to ask yourself, Marquette, would that have isolated the variable? No. What you were actually doing was placing everything with the variable, not taking it away. So we do have to ask ourselves, is this move going to get the X by itself? Got to ask yourself that. And here's another way to think about it, everybody. One more way to think about it. Like this. Everybody, if we just had a negative 11 sitting there, is it being multiplied or divided with the uh, N right now? Is it being multiplied or divided by the N right now? So I see some of y'all just trying to fill things in. It's not being multiplied or divided at all. Look, it's a negative 11 sitting there by itself plus N. That negative 11 is just sitting there. If you wanted to get rid of a negative 11, you can introduce a positive 11. You can add 11 because a negative 11 means you're subtracting 11 here. So to get rid of that minus 11, you would add 11. And so bam, right here, the same exact thing happens. Everybody, do you see that? The same exact thing happens. Yep. And that would cancel out. And that would be n equals negative three. Same deal right there. So I'm going to go over number 13, the number 17. Then we're moving on to the next set of notes here. I got y'all. So number seven or number 13 here. So number 13, I'm assuming that we asked this question here because, hey, we're dealing with negatives. So it's all good. It's all good. Dealing with negatives is not going to be the worst case in the world not by a long shot, what we would end up having here would end up being, again, if I want to get rid of that minus 17 that's randomly sitting there, I would add the 17 to both sides. Again, it's about looking at opposite operations. It's all about opposite operations here. And so, hey, taking care of business, we want to add that 17 to both sides, and that's going to make it disappear. And then we would just have to take care of whatever negative 36 plus 17 is. But remember, since we're adding opposite signs, the rule for dealing with negatives is subtract the numbers and then just keep the sign of the bigger number. So in this case, we have negative 36 plus 17. So 36 minus 17, you do your math there, you're gonna end up getting 19. But the 19 is gonna be negative because the 36 was negative. The 36, the bigger number, it was the negative. So there's that. And so now I would like to go over number 17, and then we'll take it forward from there. Yeah, same deal here. Same deal here. Let me move this out of the way. I got y'all. So here what we see is, okay, r plus 2 equals negative 16. I'll go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. And now I end up getting r equals, you're already back 16, already negative 16. You subtract two more, so you're going in the same direction. Go back 16, go back to, you went back 18. That's a total of going back 18. And so that would be negative 18. That'd be negative 18. And then lastly, for number 20, right over here. So for number 20, the answer is gonna be 216 because what we'll do is we notice that we have B right here and we are dividing by 12. So the only way to get rid of that 12 would be to multiply by 12 on both sides. So that's what gets rid of the 12 here and here. But now we just end up having B equals whatever 12 times 18 is. 18 times 10 is 180. 18 times two from the 12, 18 times two is gonna be 36. So you have 180 plus 36, which is 216. And again, you can also do it like this. 
and then you can do your thing. Again, you get 36, 180, and then you get 216. Nice and easy. And Chris, I'm sure the only reason that you were worried was because the numbers were bigger, but you knew the process. You knew the process. So with that said, Edward, go ahead. Jazil, go ahead, and then we will move forward from there. Good afternoon, coach. Um, can we see number 19? Yeah. I, negative six would be the answer. Yes. Negative six. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, it looks like I misspoke. There is negative six. Yeah. Okay. Negative six. Cool. So there you go, my party. We'll go ahead and take these answers down. Right there. Let me get my big old head out the way. Go ahead and take a screenshot if you need to. Take a screenshot if you need to. Got to get some new glasses. All right. So with that said, who here is ready to handle two-step equations now? Who here is ready to handle two-steppers? All right. Let's go ahead and handle some two-step equations then, my party people. Let's go. So here, let's say let's handle some two-step equations. So we already went over the one-steppers. Let's go ahead and take care of the two-steppers. So I'm going to warm you up with some of these two-steppers uh, because at the end of the day, really what you need to understand is this, my party people. You can look at the one on the left and you can look at the one on the right. The thing is, those are two completely different problems. Yes, we have a fraction. Yes, we see some addition and subtraction. But honestly, everybody, these two are the same. Not in the way that we solve them, but in the number of steps and the same principle. You will perform the same thing to both sides and your work backwards, opposite operations. That's it. That's it. You don't need to do PEMDAS. You need to understand PEMDAS for this, Armani. So rash or uh, uh, evaluating expressions is the opposite of solving equations. They are the backwards of each other. They are the uh, opposite of each other. So before we look at this nastiness, before we look at this vomit-inducing swirl of math, we are going to first begin by understanding how to solve a regular two-step equation. So let me make sure that we are not crying in the wind here. I got y'all. Let's go ahead and first zoom in over here. And I'm going to give you, what's all this math, young man? Jakar, I got you. So let's go ahead here and let's start with something simple. I want to show you what it looks like to be able to point out what you need to do, how to do it, and stay calm, cool, and collected. So first, let's start off with this. 2x plus 1 equals 11. Let's handle something like this first, okay? So everybody, how many steps do you see in this problem? How many things are happening with the x on the same side of the, the equation? How many things do we see? How many operations do we see? All right, for those of us that are saying two operations, I agree with you. For those of us saying two operations, I absolutely agree with you. And so here's what we're gonna do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna analyze before I take a step. And everybody pay very close attention to what I'm doing because this is gonna to apply to that ridiculous looking problem coming up. So just watch with me, bear with me, follow along. We're trying to get X by itself, right? Trying to get that X by itself. The only thing is the first thing that's happening to the X, everybody, what's the first thing happening to the X? Is it the two or is it the one? Which one is the, what, which one is the first thing happening to the X? The two or the one? Yeah, the two is the first thing happening to the X because you see that it's two times X and then you add the one. Look at what I'm doing, everybody. I'm showing you what the forward steps are, multiply by two, add one. And by doing that, I'm helping you see the backward steps by working from the end to the beginning. The end meaning the plus one, breaking through the two to get back to the X. Everyone, if I want to get rid of that plus one right here, what do I always need to say? 
what is the opposite operation? What's the opposite of adding one? And this is the point in the class where everybody's getting lazy with the exception of who was that? With the exception of Armani, everybody here is getting lazy. What do you mean subtract? What do you mean sub? What do you mean sub one? What do you mean both sides? Give me a complete phrase or a complete sentence. I would appreciate that. What are we trying to do? Well, yeah, we're gonna subtract one from both sides, not from 11. You're doing it to both sides, everybody. Remember, whatever you wanna do is whatever you wanna do, but you had to do it to both sides. So here, I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. That's gonna cancel out that one right there on the left. Guess what's left? Right over here, let me just duplicate this. Two X equals 10 now. So everybody help me out here. I'm trying to get the X by itself. Is this a little easier than it was before? Is this a little easier than it was before? Indeed, right, yeah. Definitely a little easier than it was before. Absolutely, absolutely. And so with that, what do we do to both sides? What do we do? Yeah, I got y'all conditioned now. Yeah, divide by two on both sides. Divide both sides by two. So here, divide by two, divide by two. That'll end up canceling out, giving us X equals five. X equals five in that case. X equals five in that case. The answer is five. And just to prove to you that the answer is five, you can check your work by plugging it back in. If you plug back in, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna go ahead and see that we have two times five plus one equals 11. Everybody, order of operations tells me, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and do two multiplied by five, which is gonna be 10. Everybody, is 10 plus one 11? Absolutely. And we are correct. We've checked our work. We've checked our work. So Felipe asks, if you did division first, would that give you the same answer? Uh, no. It depends on how you actually do it, though. If you divide both sides by two and you truly divide both sides by two, Felipe, yes, you could get the correct answer still. Allow me to show you what I mean by that. So if I do this, the division by two, everybody, let me show you how this always works. If you just do the opposite to both sides, it will technically always work. Watch this. So two X plus one equals 11. So everybody, what if I divided both sides by two? Felipe, I'll take your advice here. Let's see what happens. You'll still get it right. You'll still get it right. But here's the only problem, Felipe. Are we only gonna do this? No, we're not. We need to divide everything by two. You're dividing both sides by two. So you're dividing the entirety of the two X by two. You're dividing the one by two. You're dividing the 11 by two. Both sides entirely get divided by two. And so what happens is that cancels. We have X. Then one divided by two. Everybody, can we say that that's gonna be 0 0.5? Absolutely. And then 11 by, divided by two. I know it's a decimal. Don't throw up on me. Go ahead and grab an airplane bag. Don't worry. 11 divided by 2 is going to be 5.5. And so guess what, Felipe? Now that we're here, yeah, this looks ugly. Yeah, this looks like something you don't want as your firstborn child, but it's okay. We're going to go ahead and subtract 0 0.5 from both sides, and we'll still get the correct answer. Right here, right there. Bam. That's gone and we still get the right answer. We can still get it. We can still get it. But you just have to make sure, again, you do the same thing to both sides. But what most people don't see, and don't worry, uh, Koa, I agree with you. Uh, Lavina, same number of steps actually. But Callie, I agree with you that it can seem confusing, for sure. I can agree with you. Because if you take a look at that, you might be thinking, uh, well, first, dealing with decimals. And two, what if I forget to divide everything by two, right? What if I forget to divide everything by two? And that's the biggest question. That's why this way, much, much easier to get behind because you're dealing with the order of operations backwards.
which is the easiest way to get it done. Easiest way. So here's the thing, everybody. We're looking at this, and you may be thinking, hey, coach, uh, how the heck does that, and take a screenshot of this, if you would, for a quick moment, take a quick screenshot. How the heck does that help me do that other crazy problem up there, right? I, I done sung Hail Mary five times, and I still don't know how to do it. Coach, what's going on? Let me show you. Hurry up, take your screenshot. Four, three, two, and one. Let's take a look at the beast in the room. Okay. If we're looking at this and you're thinking, this sucks. Okay, hold that thought. Say less. Here's how we're going to think about this. The same way. Everybody, what's the objective? What are we trying to find by itself? You tell me. What are you trying to find by itself? We're trying to find the B by itself. We want the B by itself. Cool. There we are. Okay. Now, everybody, ask yourself this. And this is a good question to ask. And I know half of y'all are going to get it wrong. Half are going to get it right. What is the first thing that happens to the B? Is it being subtracted by the 10? Or is the B automatically being divided by the 28? Which one happens first? Should we first subtract the 10? Or should we first divide 28? Which one's happening first? Consider where the B is. Yeah, first we're subtracting the 10. Let me explain why. Everybody, when it comes to fractions, everybody correct, true or false, fractions have a numerator and a denominator, or in other words, a top and a bottom. Yes or no? Right, just spin some facts here. And if anybody wants to go ahead and uh, custom print me a shirt that just has a fax machine on it, I would love to use that for one of my classes one day, but I don't feel like doing it myself. So if anybody here wants to send me one, I'll give you my PO box. You can send it right over. But I bet. <laughs> so here, follow-up question. So you agree fractions have a numerator and a denominator. Now, follow-up, is it true or false that when you have a fraction, it is the top divided by the bottom? True or false? It is the top divided by the bottom. Is that true or false? True. That is true. That is absolutely true. So everybody, what we must understand is that it is the entirety of the B minus 10. It's all of this then being divided by the 28. So when you look at the steps, here are the forward steps. Moving forward, before we work backwards to solve, moving forward, we must understand and comprehend that the B is first being subtracted by the 10. Then whatever that result is, then the whole thing is being divided by 28. So yes or no, did that make sense? The forward way, I'm not talking about solving yet, not getting into that craziness yet, just moving forward, did that make sense? It's the entire numerator divided by 28. So it's all of this first divided by 28, if we're moving forward, if we're moving forward. Okay, now let's consider working backwards then. Let's consider working backwards. Because another thing, another little technique that I like to use sometimes is doing this. If I'm working forward, what I noticed is that I'm subtracting 10 and then dividing by 28. So then if I'm going to be working backwards, if I'm going to be working backwards, everybody, what's the first thing I should do? If I'm working backwards, what's the first thing I should do? Edmund, thank you. Yep. The first thing I should do is multiply by 28 and add 10. Look at what I just did, everybody. Everybody see that right there? Everybody see that right up there? What I did was I looked at the steps moving forward. I listed them. Subtract 10, divide 28. To work backwards, multiply by 28, add 10. And there you go. You can set yourself up for success. And this is me starting to get into mental math here. This is me starting to get into mental math for you in terms of how to get this done. So here, let's get the job done. Starting off, just recreate my box here. I don't know why it disappeared. 
My first step is going to be multiply both sides by 28. Everybody, what's going to happen on the left side no matter what? What's going to happen on the, first, on the left side no matter what? Right. It's going to cancel out. Don't worry about it. You took that step to cancel it on purpose. That is going to cancel out, leaving you with the B minus 10 right over here. Again, looking for B by itself. And then we have that minus 10 in the way. And then everybody, negative one times a 28, what's that gonna be? Negative one times a 28, what's that gonna be? Right, a negative times a positive is gonna be a negative. And then 28 times one is gonna be negative 28. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do, everybody. Did we already say what we were gonna do after we multiplied the 28? Did we already say what we were gonna do? What is it gonna be? Give me a complete phrase here. Give me a complete phrase. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? That's right. Add that 10 to both sides. Let me go ahead and get rid of that timer so I have more room. But yeah, we're gonna get rid of it. We're just gonna go ahead and do it to both sides. And so with that, boom. So look at that. You literally just follow the backward steps. Multiply by 28, add a 10, and we're set it. And so all we have to understand and worry about really is, okay, what is negative 28 plus 10? You have opposite signs. You have a negative plus a positive. Just subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the bigger number. 28 minus 10 is 18, but everybody, should that be a negative or positive 18? Y'all already spoke in the chat box. It should be a negative 18. So for my party people out there, does this right here help anybody out? Does that right there help anybody out? Like this absolutely helps, man. This absolutely helps. It really does. It really, 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 really does. And to prove it to you, I want to show it to you in this problem over here. Everybody. Is this problem different or the exact same as the one before? Is this one different or the exact same? Let me show you both of them in comparison. Is it different or the exact same? It is not the same. It looks the same because you see a fraction and you see a negative or subtracting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not the same though. Not the same. Let me show it to you. Again, remember everybody, if you want to understand how to solve the equation, you need to work backwards. So to work backwards, how do you go forward? Let's go ahead and be honest with ourselves. Let's go, watch this. So here we go right here. Everybody question, we are trying to solve for what? We are trying to solve for what? We're trying to solve for R. And everybody, what is immediately happening to the R? Is the R being added with that negative six first or is it being divided by four first? Which one is happening first? It's being divided by the four. So notice how it's not like it's R minus six like that. That's not what's happening. That is not what's happening. That is not there. It is R and it's immediately being divided by the four. And then we're combining it with that negative six. Are we better able to see that everybody? Are we better able to see that there? Now we can see this is the forward steps. Notice how this is different. Notice how it's different. Just pay attention to both. Pay attention to both. Look at the left one. We had the entire numerator, the B minus 10. Then it was divided by 28. So minus 10 with the B. And then divide by 28. That, were, that was the for correct forward steps. But now look over here. Now you see that the R is immediately being divided by the 4. Then it's being combined with that negative six. So yes or no, do you see the difference between here and there? Do you see the difference? Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of just set ourselves up for success here by saying, hey, moving forward, what are the steps? Moving forward, I see that my first step was divide by the four. And then my second step right here, so R, divide by four, and my next step 
is going to be adding the negative six. Everybody, what's the same thing as saying adding negative six? Right, it's just subtraction of six. And don't worry, if you're confused right now, don't worry. I'm showing you the tougher end of two-step equations. So if this doesn't make too much sense, don't worry. Keep the same principles in your mind. I'm working backwards and I gotta make sure I do the same thing to both sides. Keep that in your mind and we're gonna be fine. I got you. So here, first we divide it by four and then we see that subtraction of six. So everybody, if we're trying to succeed here, we need to work backwards. So let's understand what we need to do to work backwards here. What do we do first, everybody, if we're trying to work backwards? What do we do first? Just look at your notes. Look at the last step, it was minus six. So your first step is the opposite. Your first step is the opposite of subtracting six. It's gonna be what? Adding six first, that's your first step. Your first step is gonna be adding six and then the opposite of dividing by four is multiplying by four. Opposite operations, okay? Opposite operations. And no worries if we're confused. We're about to do the drill sets here, and they're going to be much, much, much straightforward, much more straightforward. I got you. So in this problem here, everybody, let's take the appropriate actions. And again, if you're confused, don't worry. I hear you. I got you. Stay put. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add the six to both sides. Because if I add the six to both sides, guess what happens? This here is going to be gone. And then negative five plus six, that's going to give me a one because six minus five is one. Six minus five is going to be one. That's right, Armani. That's what we're going to do first. And now we still have that R divided by four. So that was the first step that we just did. Now, what's the second step that we should do, everybody? We said that we were going to add six first. And now the second step, what was it? Right, the opposite of dividing by four, multiply by four. Right there and right there. So if we take a look, now we have the R divided by four times four, that cancels out. And from here, we get four times one. So the answer would be R equals four. Just like that. Right on, Jose. Right on, Jose. So on a scale of one to 10, how much did that make sense? How much sense did that make here on a scale of one to 10? I am expecting uh, some mixed reviews. I'm definitely expecting some mixed reviews. Armani, I think you meant a 10, not a zero, but I got to there. Cool, five, sixes, 11s, 10s, 11, uh, nines and 10s, fours, 10 and fast, kind of like an eight, nine, 200 out of 100. Sounds good. That sounds like that makes appropriate sense. All right, cool. So here's what we're gonna do, my party people. We're gonna apply these same ideas to some two-step equations now. Let's go and go over here. And here's what I wanna do. I wanna first start us off with something like, Let's go ahead and look at something a little less cruel. Let's take a look at something like this one here. Number 35. Let's take a look at something a little less cruel, okay? Let's take a look at something a little less cruel. So let's take a look at the forward steps. First question, my party people, what are we solving for here? Who was that? Was that Orlando? Orlando, all good? All right, no worries. So let's go ahead and try this here. I need cruel to challenge my brain cells. Hey, don't worry, I got you. So we're looking for X. Everybody, what is immediately happening to the X? Right, we see that it's immediately being multiplied by that three. It's immediately being multiplied by three. And then what's happening after that? What's happening after? Yeah, we said it's multiplying by three, then what's happening after? Subtracted by eight, that's right, right here. 
subtracted by eight. And so those would be the first step, the first two steps, the only two steps that we would notice. And so what this means is we need to work backwards, right? Yes or no? We got to work backwards, yes or no? Yeah, we got to work backwards. So let's go ahead and do that. So watch this. So what I'm gonna do, let me actually just make sure that these are the same color so it can be a little easier to see what we're doing backwards. So what's the opposite of subtracting eight, everybody? All right, adding eight. And then what's the opposite of multiplying by three? Right, it's gonna be division of three. So right there. And there we have it. So those are the steps we're gonna take everybody. So notice, that's what I have right up there. This is supposedly, allegedly, gonna give me the, the correct answer. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's try it out. Let's see what happens. So here, I'm gonna add eight. Okay, look at that. That's gonna go ahead and give me that cancellation. Okay. And so I end up with three X. And everybody 37 plus eight is what? Thank you, Edward. That's gonna be 45 of a tail. Thank you, pretty much right there, 45. Okay, so don't forget the goal. Get the X by itself. We have to get rid of the three. So what do we need to do to both sides? Well, right here, divide by three, nice and easy. And so divide by three, divide by three, and we end up getting X equals 45 divided by three, which is 15. So for those of us that were confused a little bit earlier, does this make a little more sense? If we can map out the forward way, you can get the backwards way. You literally just go backwards and do the opposite operations. That is it. That is it. Coach, you have improved my math skills a lot. Well, guess what we can do with a few more practice sessions? I got you. Oh, for sure, Mary. Yeah, yeah I got you. We'll give you more. I will give you guys more for sure. For sure. Now, what I would like to do here is I want to give you guys a couple of ex more examples, and then I'm going to pin you against the drill set that we have right here. So allow me to show you. There's two more examples here. Let me give you guys these over here. Okay, so here you go. I'm gonna give you two examples here. So I'll say, and then also over here, So Carrie Ann, are you asking about systems of equations or where the variable is on both sides? So for variables on both sides, what you need to do with that is first make sure you get the variables on the same side and then free range. Do exactly what we did before. Yep. There you just want to make sure that the terms are on the same side, the X's or the Y's or whatever. Yeah. So here, yeah, no worries. So let's go ahead here and put the timer up. I'm going to give you guys just about another minute and a half. And then we're going to go over that. There you go. I would add the two on both sides first. Uh huh. All 
All right, so now there's 40 seconds left. I'm gonna start working on the first one. All right, I'm gonna start working on the first one to show you again. Here, working forward, what I notice is this. I'm trying to get X by itself. So I see that I'm multiplying by seven. And then I'm gonna be subtracting by two. So to do the opposite, to work backwards, what I would do is I'm gonna to add two and divide by seven. So when you look at it like that, everybody, so there's the timer, let me just go and get rid of it right here. Okay, so here's the idea. The idea is if I'm taking a look at that and I'm saying, hey, I know the forward steps, I'm multiplying by seven, then I'm subtracting two. Well, then what I need to do to work backwards is add two and divide by seven. Start with 40. Seriously, like this is the mental math way. With mental math, start with the 40. Start with the 40. Everybody, just take a look at this. Look at how cool this is. Everybody, take 40. Everybody, what's 40 plus 2? 42. Then, everybody, what's 42 divided by 7? 6. There you go. And there's your answer. And there's your answer. You can get the answer using the arrows in that sense. Because remember, the arrows are there to show you, hey, what's the forward way? If I knew what X was, this is how I'd get the 40, the 40 at the other side. But I don't know what X is, so I'm going to start with the 40 and do the opposite operations. Add 2, divide 7, you get to 6, you're done. Don't believe me? Let me show you. I got you. Right over here, you'll go ahead, add the 2, add the 2, cancels out. You give yourself 42 equals 7x. And then what you do at the end of the day is we'll divide both sides by 7. And you get x equals, oh, look at that. x equals 6. Huh. OK. Look at that. And so um, I believe, was that Mary Kay? Was that Callie that was not totally with it there in terms of the arrows? Who was that that was not totally enjoying the arrows? Just want to make sure that it doesn't, oh, it was you, Callie? Does it make a little more sense there, what I'm, what I'm showing you here? These are the steps that you'll do to both sides. Here, add two, and then divide by seven. It, I'm literally predicting it from the beginning. And so what I'm getting at everybody is, instead of, boom, doing that and writing it all down and dividing by seven and writing it all down, all you need to say is, hey, look, I'm starting with a 40, plus two, divide seven, I'm done. Boom, there it is. And that's just PEMDAS working backwards. You can save time, you can live better, Walmart. But what I'm really saying is you can go ahead and save yourself a lot of time by just making sure you understand PEMDAS forward so you can do it backwards. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So and we're taking care of this last one here. A plus three over five equals 11. What you would say is this. Yes, David, thanks for catching that. So with that, what I'm saying here is, hey, I'm trying to find the A. What I notice is that I got the plus three. Then I'm dividing the whole thing by five. And so if I'm looking at my forward steps, if I knew what A was, if I could combine those numbers, well, the first thing I see is that I'm adding three right here. And then, no worries, Gene, I see you, boss. <laughs> and so then from there, you would go ahead and divide by five after you have that three added in. And so when you're asking yourself, hey, what's the backward steps? How am I going backwards to solve this? Callie, take a look. Callie, I'm looking at this. And the way that the reason that this works is because it's just a number on the other side. If it was a variable on this side and a variable on that side. You would have to do it just a little more work to make things work. But here, you just have a number. So you know that whatever you're going to do to solve this, you're doing to this. Because you'll multiply by five on both sides and subtract three. And so take a look. The opposite of dividing by five, multiply by five. The opposite of, of add three, it's going to be subtract three. And so, boom, you can use some mental math to get the problem done instantly. 11 times five is 55. 55 minus three is 52. Boom, you can get the correct answer right there. But just to show you how it works, here we go. And move all of this over here just slightly and get rid of that highlighter. 
And so what we would do first, hey, multiply both sides by five, because that's gonna get rid of that right here. And you have a plus three equals 55. And then your last step is subtracting three. And that's gonna be a equals 52. As predicted, as predicted, as promised, there it is. There it is. So is anybody here starting to see the mental math portion of solving equations here? Is anybody here seeing the mental math portion of solving equations? Again, remember guys, it's not about getting the question right on the ASVAB, it's about getting it done in as little time as possible. So um, remember guys, we have two more interns coming in in a couple of weeks for the company and they're gonna be helping us out with the boot camp again. And they're gonna be updating it. And one of the next ones that we have going on, solving equations. Solving equations, drill sets, uh, speed drills, those are coming in, uh, coming in hot. So are you guys ready for some drill sets though? Are you guys ready for the drill sets here for solving equations? The two steppers, who here is ready? Yeah, Callie. So the black arrow is exactly, the, the black arrow is basically saying, hey, yo, if I knew what A was, if I knew what A was, like suppose A was 10 or 15 or seven or whatever, what you would be doing is you would be adding the A with the three. And then whatever that is, you would divide it by five. So the black arrow shows you, hey, going forward, here's what would have happened, but we're not going forward. We need to go backwards to find A. We gotta go backwards to find out what that variable is. And so you have to do the opposite order and operation, the opposite order of operation. So here, instead of adding three and dividing by five, we're gonna multiply by five and subtract three. So does that make a little more sense there, Kit? There you go, Callie, perfect, right on. That's what I'm talking about. So uh, bro, let teaching looks mad easy. I mean, I've been doing this for over a decade, man. <laughs> so before we continue, before we do the drill set, very, very briefly, because I don't wanna do this at the end of class, I would rather do it right now, everybody. I'd rather do it right now. So for those of you guys who are not in my full program, if you want to get hundreds and hundreds of hours of lessons just like this, the program has it. If you want to in incorporate more live lessons into your practice for the ASVAB, you're in the right place for it. If you want thousands of extra practice problems, video solutions to accompany you, study guides, flashcard sets, worksheets, seriously, the program has it. And also, if you need help and you need help making a study guide, or a plan for yourself or just working through certain situations or practice problems, the program does that for you. You can text me when you need help. And so very, very briefly, if you are interested in the full program, I am offering a slight discount code at the end of class. So go ahead and stay, but I will be talking about the program at the end of class. Tomorrow's class is gonna be all about, guess what? Setting up equations from word problems. Is anybody here particularly excited about that class? Learning how to set up equations from word problems? Oh yeah, right on, right on, right on. Right on, so we're gonna be doing that tomorrow. So if you are not in the program, just hold on until the end of class, we will be talking more about that. But right now we are gonna finish it off with the drill set my party people. So let's go ahead, let's get on right over here. And let me get problem number 21 up. We'll do 21 through 26 up first. We'll do 21 to 26 up first. Um, I'm going to get my big old head out of the way and let me go ahead and start the timer. So I'm going to give you two and a half minutes here. I only expect you to try, if this is your first time here, I would expect you to get one of them done and maybe try a second one out. But if you can get all of them done, great. Sure. Pat yourself on the back, you know, have a burrito bowl before it's Taco Tuesday. I don't care. Do your thing. But what I want to make sure you do is at least try one out. So let me get my big old head out the way. Give it a go, my party people. And I will be giving hints as we go along.
And time is up. Let me know how many were you able to try out? How many were you able to try out? Hey, that's what's up. The majority of us at least got one. At least we're able to complete one. I love seeing that. And a lot of us I see were able to get three or more. That's very impressive. I actually enjoy seeing that a lot. And I really do enjoy seeing that. That's that's pretty promising there. And even if we weren't able to complete one, it's okay. It's absolutely okay. Because remember, I just want you to do your best so we can take that best and make it better. All right. That's really what we're trying to do here. So allow me to go ahead. Um, I'm going to review these few problems here. It is 753. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, solve what I can in the next five minutes here. Then I'm going to wrap up class, you know, give us a little feed forward into the future. Um, and if you're in the program already, remember that we have a ton of lessons for solving equations um, that you can go ahead and look back upon along with those uh, videos for those practice problems. So get ready for that. And remember, we are going to have drill sets and speed drills coming soon for solving equations. So here we go. Number 21. So here's the idea. Was anybody here freaking out about that negative in front of the R? Yes or no? Was anybody here freaking out about the negative in front of the R? Kind of me. Some of y'all probably like, I didn't freak out because I skipped it. And it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. I got you. So here's what we got to do. Just map it out. We see that we're looking for the R. There's a negative on it. So we're multiplying by a negative one. And then we add two. Multiply by negative one, add two. The opposite operations, subtract two, divide by negative one. And so with that said, here we go. I'll start by subtracting two to get the negative 16 equals negative R. And everybody, if I wanna get rid of a negative on a variable, all I gotta do is just change the sign of both sides. Yeah, remember, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So if I wanna get rid of a negative, well, change the sign on everything. So negative R equals negative 16. You can divide it by negative one if you want to. You, but technically really what you're doing is just changing the sign of both sides. R equals 16 for number 21. Nope, you cannot keep the negative. Negative R is not the same as solving for R. Nope. You know, it's like saying, hey, negative X equals seven. That's not X. You gotta get X by itself. Yeah, got to get it to myself. So number 23. Number 23 here, what you're looking at is dividing by 8, right over here. Dividing by 8, then subtracting the 4. Divide by 8, then subtract 4. That's what we would do if we knew what R was. But we don't know what R is, so we're going to work backwards to get there. So we're going to add 4, then multiply by 8. Let's get it done. So here, add 4 to both sides. What is up happening there? is cancels out right here. And then we're left with R over eight equals negative six plus four is negative two. And so here what we would do is we would now multiply both sides by dun, 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 eight. And then that cancels out again. And that's gonna give you R equals negative 16. Negative 16, not negative 52, not 18. It would give us R equals negative 16 in that sense here. Right on, Key. I love the excitement. There we go. Now let's take a look at number 25. I'm gonna I'm gonna hope that I can get numbers 22 and 24 and 26. I'm gonna hope I can, but let's try these out here. So uh here, the forward steps that we notice are gonna be: hey, we're gonna multiply by that negative 10. Multiply by that negative 10. And then over here, we then subtract the 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards. Whoops, I'm going to go ahead and grab that as red. And we're going to add 10 and divide by negative 10. Just doing the opposite. And so Chris, just to answer your brief moment question there, um, if you have a negative variable, you gotta make it a positive variable. You're solving for the positive version of the variable. So you would end up dividing that negative out. You can multiply both sides by negative one or divide it by negative one. Either way, it's gonna be the same thing. 
but we had negative R equal negative 16. So that meant positive R is positive 16 or just R by itself. Gotcha, Chris. I gotcha. So here, let's get the steps done here. Bam. All right. Add 10. That's my first step right over there. So add 10 to both sides. What you end up getting is negative 100 plus 10. So that's going to be negative 90 equals negative 10K. And then from here, we would end up dividing both sides by that negative 10. That's exactly what we said we would do. And so we divide by negative 10. And so negative 90 divided by negative 10, that's going to give us a positive 9. So K equals positive 9. Positive 9 in that sense. So there's number 25. Now it is already 758. So what I will do my party people is I will give you the answers to 22, 24 and 26. I know Orlando, I know, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. It's just that it's only two minutes left in class and I just wanna at least give you the answers to these or to these over there. I'm gonna give you the answers to those and then we do have to call it a day. I know you guys are having fun and I love having y'all but I wanna make sure that I get off and actually get time to eat dinner because I wake up at four in the morning every day to film. So with that, let me give you the answers here. The answers are going to be uh, negative 9 for M. Over here, we're going to have X equals uh, negative 15. And here we will have V equals 6. And there you go. So those are those answers there. I can go ahead and bring this in here. Try to give you all a chance to screenshot it. But you see how we can absolutely, everybody, you tell me if you think that this is possible for you. Do you think it's possible for you to go from the left side where we're putting in all of this work? Look at all of this work we're putting in. Do you think it's possible to go from that to simply looking at it and knowing what to do? Do you think that's possible for you? Honest question. As of right now, after going through this class, do you feel like that's possible for you? Do you believe so? Right. Yes. I love seeing that. Yeah. It's going to take a little more work, but we can do it. Absolutely. That is the perspective that I want you to take on this, everybody.